My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. My name is Marina, and I'm a transformational coach. I'm from San Diego, and you're in Texas, right? I'm actually in L.A., so I'm about two hours away from you. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, um, so sunny San Diego. It's a beautiful day. How about you? So far, so good. I mean, it's pretty clean. Listen, as long as we don't have people driving around, we get the beautiful weather. Like, there's literally no clouds, no snow. I mean, LA's traffic is coming back, and I'm not down with it yet, so I'm, I'm adjusting a little bit myself. So let's dive into it this morning. Let's do it. What does it mean, chance for? Why do we need to transform ourselves? Let's get the vocabulary right. What does transformation mean? Do, what what needs to happen for me to say I was transformed? Yeah, transformation means learning the tools to deal with anything that comes up for you. So we all, we're, as humans, we all have things that come up for us every day. And a lot of people just sleepwalk through that. They just, you know, live life without even noticing what's going on. They go to work, they're with their kids, and then the day is done. So to me, transformation is learning to deal with what's going on inside and then also taking a look at all of the patterns that we've gathered since we were little and really asking, like, is this what I want? Do I want these patterns? Do I want to live my life from this lens or do I want to do it differently? Okay, that seems like a lot of work. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about the patterns. So what do you mean when, when I got the – I mean – so it is your opinion that as, as we grow up, we gather a lot of garbage and some of them we got to get rid of. So what are some of the top um, things that we need to drop that you see that's common among, uh, I guess, adults at this point because we grow up now? Yeah, and you know, sometimes we don't drop it. Sometimes we say like, I'm okay with this. I'm going to stick to this and that's fine. So it could be things like people pleasing um, that a lot of women do. Um, it could be really avoiding feeling anything. Like you have feelings and you're like, I'm not your friend. Like I don't want to deal with you. Um, or avoiding things, avoiding even good things in our lives, which is common for a lot of entrepreneurs as well. You know, it's a big block. Um, it could be different beliefs that we have about our abilities, about how much we deserve. And the biggest thing that I like working with, which is not really a pattern, it's like a mixture of patterns, is just not having purpose. Like waking up in the morning and just not feeling excited for the day, like just sleepwalking through the day. So how do I come up with my purpose? Because, I mean, initially when I started reading a lot of self-development books back in the days, I want to say like, 12 to 14 years ago, within the first two years, everybody said you got to write down your goals, your purpose. You got to be excited when you wake up. I mean, I had no choice. I had to wake up and go run my business or a couple of families would have not had roof on top of their head. So to me, I had a big challenge of distinguishing, is this what I want? I mean, I do enjoy doing it, but then at the time was like, how much of it is it just the force of mortgage, car payment, you know, responsibilities, obligation, all of these things? How do people differentiate these two? If Because I was confused. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Because sometimes we just get sucked into the routine and we kind of do what we have to. So you know what my favorite, least favorite and favorite word that I check with my clients is I have to or I can't. Uh, when they say have, it's like, really do you have to so that word is immediately gets my attention and we kind of look into that are you living from the perspective of a victim that's my first question when you say i have to or i can't or i should that's another one which i think that you kind of mentioned right i should pay my bills i should i have to so one of my favorite tools is byron katie's the work do you know have you heard of byron katie yes i have but i have not done the work yeah, it's it's amazing. And it's really simple. You said it's a lot of work. To be honest, I don't think that it has to be. It can be very simple. It can be fun. And it can be, um, in a way, unattached. Like, we don't have to be in judgment, in the mind, and thinking, right? So, Byron Katie, it's four questions. That's all it is. Is it true? Is your thought true? Can you know without a shadow of a doubt that it's true? Who are you with this thought? 
So how do you behave? How do you feel? Who are you with the thought? Who are you without the thought? And then change the thought and give an example. And that's it. And it can switch your mind so quick. It can just kind of like open the lens, you know, because we look through this camera. It's very, very small. And then when we question the belief, like, I have to go to work, for example, even that. You can question anything. If you question the sky is blue, whatever. Um, it just opens. It starts to open. You're like, huh. You know, and that moment is my favorite moment because you start to see more of the picture and you start to gather more of it. So, I don't know if you can go back and change time, but at that time, I had to show up. So, I don't think it was, a, it was an option. And I think the self-realization that I'm okay with it, that I know that I put myself in that position. Yeah. It wasn't with someone forcing, a, you know, I needed to go and I chose to go. Yeah. And it wasn't something that I could say that I hated it. It wasn't like that. It's just like, could I have done other things or can I do other things? Yes, I can and I could, right? But at that moment, I was, the things that I did before that decision forced me into making that decision like I did. So the cause of it wasn't the decision or the job or the business that I had. It was me making those decisions up to that point. See, that's beautiful. And that is about taking full responsibility. So the moment we start to say, like, I'm taking full responsibility. This is what I created. This is my decision. And then you ask yourself, well, first, what did I do to create it if I don't like it? What are the beliefs that I had? What are my actions that made me create it? Because I spent a lot of my life being a victim. I was like, oh, why is this happening to me? Even traffic, you know, you mentioned traffic in LA. It's like, oh, now I sit here in traffic. And one day I caught myself and I was like, well, I'm going somewhere that I really want to go. So why can't I just be excited about that? I don't have to sit here. I chose to sit here. We choose everything, you know, even with work and feeding your family, you're still choosing that. No one is forcing you. You get to choose. So switching that in your mind and starting to say, I want to, I choose to, that's already huge. And I find that when people are in victim mentality, it's everything. It's their relationships, it's money, it's business, it's their relationship with themselves, work, everything. So it just takes over. So making that switch and starting to question, like, do I have to, is really, really huge. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. So here's my question. At what point do we get programmed like that so we could find that that so we could find that point in time where we could go back and modify it because in 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 high school in elementary in middle school i had to do homeworks i don't think at that point i i, I could comprehend and and bring up the level of my awareness if i didn't have a coach or a mentor or someone that could bring that attention to bring that focal point say no, you don't have to. You get, you're getting, you, you, you have the option to choose. So I think we live a lot of our, our, our life like that. And I mean, everybody knows that they had to show up to school on time. They had to show up to the class. They had to do the homework or there'll be consequences. So I don't know. We got to find out what, how do we get unprogrammed so we don't. I don't know. It's retarded. To me, like, they should be teaching this stuff in middle school. If they would have taught this stuff in middle school, they I wouldn't have to go back and fix all of the garbage. You know, and now instead of cleaning two years worth of garbage, now i got to fix 20 years worth of garbage, and they expect me to do it in six months. I, I mean, that that's... Yeah, that's but, you know, first of all, I don't think that we have to find the original. Like, there's always more that pops up, and one of my favorite things to do clients is inner child work where you actually start with either an emotion, so a trigger, like something happened, someone pissed me off, and that is probably triggering something in me. It's not them. They're just a mirror. So I look in the mirror, and I see something that's really frustrating. I don't blame the mirror when I look in the mirror, and we often blame the other person, right? But really, when we look at the other person, we actually see something reflecting to us that we don't like about ourselves. So I like to start with a trigger. So like you said, garbage, to me, it's a gift. 
like, oh, I'm pissed right now, or I feel lonely right now, or whatever I'm feeling. It's like, thank you for this information. Okay, where is this coming from? So then I'll just have them close their eyes and tune into that sensation, and then ask, when is the first time I felt this way? And you can do this exercise every day, and something new will come up every day. Because there's so many memories, there's so many experiences that built this up. And like you said, our society is built that way. So it could be even from two days ago, you know. But when we're very young, it's when we're most programmed at that time. So just going back there and reprogramming that moment. And we can do that over and over and over again. And what I use is, and what I've learned, is acceptance. So instead of judging and being like, why am I behaving like this? Why am I thinking like this? Why did this happen to me? It's really just accepting and giving love to that moment, myself, and moving from acceptance to action that way instead of self-judgment, which we often do as well. So here's my question. What's the... If I accept the shit that happened and I take responsibility, Is it your opinion? So when I accept it, I'm not saying I'm okay with it. Or am I saying I'm okay with it? No, you're not saying, you're not blaming, right? It's different to take responsibility and to take blame. So for me, this is really deep. And, you know, you can, I, um, there's an amazing book that I can recommend. It's called The Choice. And it's actually about the Holocaust. It's the Holocaust survivor who went, who asked, like, in the Holocaust, did I have a choice? Being in the Holocaust. You know, and I get like goosebumps when I talk about it because right now we think like, you know, I have to go to work, but this is like in Holocaust. And for me personally, I am a survivor of sexual assault. And so for the longest time, I was like, I'm a victim. Why did this happen to me? Poor me. Like, look at me. Everybody feels sorry for me. And then I asked, okay, well, I don't have to blame myself. It's not my fault. But what? where's my responsibility? So I had a pattern of dependence. I looked for men to depend on. Um, different, you know, what, what was my pattern that really brought me to that position? And I also saw that I liked being a victim. I asked myself, what do you like about it? What do you like about being a victim? Because even when you're in a really shitty situation, if you do it over and over again, there's something you like about it. I guarantee. And it's a very uncomfortable question. At first, I was like, oh, I don't want to ask it. But when I asked that question daily, I found out that I get a lot of love from other people when I share my story, when I get sick. You know, when I get sick and I'm like, I'm sick, can you take care of me? I get love that way. So then I asked myself, well, how can I get love another way? Because that's not a good strategy. It puts me in this position of disempowerment. And I don't have that many benefits from that. I have some benefits, I get love, but I also have a lot of issues that I don't want to have anymore. So that question really changed my life. Yeah, no, definitely I agree with it. Because sometimes in, in my mind, I'm having a problem with the vocabulary. I, I want to put the right meaning to the right vocabulary. Because sometimes we don't attach to the we don't attach the right meaning, meaning to the right situation or event that happened, then we just let it go and then it just continues on going for one year, two years, five years, ten years, where if you attach the right meaning to it. Maybe you could accept it, take responsibility, move on with, or keep it if you like it, and and if if it's serving you, you keep it there. So that's where I see it. I do see a lot of people having victim mentality. I don't know if it's victim mentality. I'm trying to figure out what's the difference between entitlement and victim mentality, and how they're correlated. Because you'll see that especially when it comes to election. Like people say, oh, I, I like this candidate or I want this candidate or this candidate is going to increase Social Security. This candidate is going to get free health care or this candidate is good for business. Then I look at it and I'm like, so that means in the news, in a mass way, we're being brainwashed to be entitled, having somebody, picking somebody else and giving them the choice and the option and the power to make decision for us, which to me is retarded. Why don't I make the decision for myself? Why do I want to give the power to somebody else and let that and hope that that person makes the decision for me? And that could be in a relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend, all that. 
So here's my, here's the, 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 the million dollar question. If an entrepreneur is lacking in their business, do you think it's a business issue or, or a personal issue? Well, let me tell you that I, for the longest time, focused only on the strategy. I learned marketing. I learned, you know, all the strategy in the world is not going to work when you're not in, working on your mindset. And mindset work is something that we do at the gym every single day. So when you're having issues, yeah, I think you look at both, right? It's smart. It's wise to look at both. You look at the strategy, what's going on there. Um, but then... You know, I believe, honestly, 90% of it is in the mind. And I love what you said about, like, <laughs> I'm giving my power away to a, whether it's a candidate or another person, to make this decision for me and to save me, like, rescue me, please, give me all the things that I need. And when you do that, you always ask yourself, am I giving those things? Like, am I giving myself the social care or the health care to myself first? Because when you give it to yourself what you need, you feel that urgency to look for it elsewhere, even in a politician, so much less. Maybe you still do. You're like, okay, I'm good. Like, I'm pretty good. But I will love support from this candidate or this candidate. So, again, it's like a trigger. Like, whenever we start looking outside of ourselves, it's like turn it around. You know, turn the picture around and really look into the mirror and look at your stuff, what's going on. In in pursuit of raising your self awareness, what are one or two techniques that individuals could do to start it off? I don't expect people to, you know, I'm not there, so I can't. I mean, I didn't get to where I am today within short span of period of time. It it's I have to I have to solve challenges and puzzles inside. So when I say I'm okay with this. It can't just be words saying I'm okay with it because deep inside I know I'm not okay with it. So it doesn't make sense. It took me a long time to come to realization. I still do it sometimes, but I have to be able to catch myself or no, I'm not okay with this. Why did I say I was okay with this? It's not okay. So what are one or two tips or tricks or, or if I want to move myself up to the level of a scale where I could say I am pretty aware of what the heck I'm doing or what the heck is happening to me? What are some of the th tips that you think we should implement? Yeah, and it's also like what you said, it still happens because the thing is you're not, these practices that I'm going to share, they're super simple. It's not about avoiding. We can't avoid. We're human. We're always going to be pissed. We're always going to be frustrated. We're going to be triggered. It's normal. But now you have the tool to deal. That's the difference. So instead of, which I used to, when a client said, no, be in bed for three days and be sad about it. Now you're like, okay, here's my practice. 10 minutes. I'm good. I think I'm going. So the two practices that are the simplest and my favorite, the first one, the meditation that I do, at first I really struggled with meditation personally. I was in my mind. I was like, I can't. Too many thoughts. So what I do is I actually tune into my body and I just check. What's going on? Kind of like a scientist. Oh, my stomach is kind of heavy. like I feel heaviness in my stomach, where I feel tightness. My throat is closing up today, and that's it. And I'm just I'm just tuning in, and it can be for five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, as much as you want. You start that way, and that way you build a relationship with your intuition and your body, because your body is freaking smart. That's the thing, and your intuition is gonna lead you to where you need to go. It's not on the outside. It's not out here. It's actually in here. So that's the first practice that will really help you get out of your mind because our minds create anxiety, create story, catastrophize. You know, there's one little thing that happened and now we're like in the grave already. So once you get into the body, it's different. You start to tune in. You start to listen. The second practice, uh, we live in a society that is really judgmental right and everyone judges themselves and i also grew up that way I grew up in a ukrainian family super self-judgmental like no self-compassion so like i said i really believe that change in our business and our lives it always comes from acceptance first we accept rather than judge and then we make the change much more quickly and there's a lot of research about this i'm a big fan of studies on this stuff there's a lot of research by Kristen neff about how People who are self-compassionate, they're much more effective. They move on fast because 
they give themselves compassion in the moment. Oh, this happened. You know, I, I failed this way in my business. Okay, it happens to everyone. I still love myself. Okay, next. You know, I move on to my next thing. So how I practice self-compassion is I imagine either a baby or an animal that I love. Just like innocent, pure, can't hate it, you know? And I just feel the love. I feel the love for that being. And then I bring that love to my sensation. So maybe I'm having a really bad day and I'm really sad. I bring love and acceptance straight there. And I'm telling you, in two seconds, it just melts away because all it wants is to be heard. It's like a little kid. You know, You, I think you have kids, right? And uh, and kids just want to be heard, right? When they're yelling and you're like, Tara, it's not going to work. They want to be heard, even if it's a baby or a, a, an older child. They want to be heard and that's how our emotions are. And that's how, you know, that's how our thoughts and emotions are. They want a space to be accepted and heard. So once you accept it that way, give me a look, it just melts away and you can go on to do your next thing. Love it. Listen, how do people find you? Um, my Instagram is in the raw and my website is still in the raw.com. And I actually, I, I told you, I actually recently changed my business from plant-based coaching, which was great to transformational coaching, which is like a big, you can, I think you can tell it's, it's a big passion. So I post a lot about, um, self-development on the Instagram and the website. And what's your favorite, uh, self-help book? Oof, favorite. Um, the Big Leap is really good. I was reading that recently, and I love. You know what? I, I have this one right on my on my table. How to fight? It's very. It's Thich Nhat Hanh. It's very simple, and I've highlighted the crap out of it. <laughs> but it's very simple, very poetic, and it is about acceptance. So I love that. What about you? Well, I think for me. One of my one of the challenges that I have is um, maybe it's because I do a lot of activities and I keep occupied. I see a lot of people having extra time in their hand that they have this opportunity to go in there and be pissed off, entitlement, all of these different things. I think one of the things that individuals can do that has worked for me is make sure that I have things going on, not just a lot of work, not just, just, I got little things, pocket of things that I could go to at any time, whether that would be a book, computer work, this, posting on Instagram, taking care of family. I have these little pockets of things that I do, so I don't have time to go and feel sad. Like I eliminate a lot of that because I'm doing activities and I got a lot of different varieties. Well, I'm not, I don't have time to be pissed off as much. Or if I'm pissed off, it's for only a short period of time because I got other things happening that I get in a different state of mind. So you just move on. I don't know. That has worked out for me too. But I know so some people can purpose, right? From different things going on in your life. Definitely. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Uh, stay safe. And hopefully we can do a few other videos because we talked about some topics that are still... I got challenges with them. So I'm still, I'm trying to solve it myself. I'm low IQ, so I learn very fast, slowly. But once I get it, I get it. So I like to make sure that I repeat it a couple of times to just analyze it, make sure that I do observe it. Because if you're not getting it and you're just touching it on the surface, I don't think you're getting the full juice. And if you didn't yeah, get the juice, the you can't you teach gotta, it other people. You got to experience it, like try it on kind of thing, and then see, oh, how, you know, how is it working for me? But I love it because I'm sure that people listening are on the journey with you, you know? So that's that's perfect then. Thank you for having me. And I would love to be on again and, yeah, challenge our brains. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Definitely stay safe. Talk to you soon. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.